Hello all, welcome to Tech Tapcher. So in this video, we are going to learn about what is a load balancer and how we can create a load balancer in a Google Cloud. So first thing, this load balancer concept is not only related to a Google Cloud, but it is a normal concept in terms of any cloud, in terms of any application. Okay. So as name suggests, load balancer is used to balance load between two or multiple systems. Okay. So uh, first, we'll see what is a load balancer and how to create load balancer, how to create uh, backend services, how to configure load balancer, that are the secondary part. But first thing we should understand why we need load balancer and what is the load balancer. So I'll just take a very simple day-to-day uh, -day life example to explain you uh, what is a load balancer and why we need a load balancer. So just take an example. You are using any of the social media application. I'll take example of a uh, YouTube and just assume uh, this is a YouTube's application architecture and this users so come to the left side here so there are three users one users in in san francisco one is in loa one is in singapore and this is a web tier of your youtube so one is in us east one a one is us central one b one is us central one a so here these are in single region to different zone and this is a another region and here you could see the internal tier database tier so this is a simple architecture of three tier application okay now why we need a load balancer here so you could see the users are not directly hitting to the web tier of youtube so they are hitting to the load balancer or a load balancer ip what will happen if user in san francisco hit a load balancer ip so this load balancer will detect okay this user is from san francisco and we have to give user a better performance so what it will do it will try to give a minimum latency for this user and it will try to serve the traffic from the us central 1a okay so you could see the first it is traffic is going to us central 1a and it will get response from the us central 1a now if user in lowa tries to hit the same youtube url so it will go and detect okay this user is from this region and it will try to serve the user from the location us central 1 b and the same way if user in singapore is hitting the youtube url what will happen it will detect okay this is from asia region and instead of us central one it will try to serve from the asia because there will be a minimal latency from that region now suppose if this asia region goes down so what will happen to the user in singapore will it not able to access the youtube or application no that is not the case if the Asia is down now. Now what will happen? The traffic for the Singapore user will go to the next healthy instance. So now what are the healthy instance? US Central 1B, US Central 1A. Now load balancer detect, okay, which will give the minimal latency and it will go to that instance and serve traffic from that instance. The same way, this is now external load balancer or HTTPS. Similarly, it will happen same for your database tier. Here you could see the internal load balancer. So load balancer will serve the traffic from the healthy database or a nearest database which will give a better performance and minimal latency so if traffic is coming from web tier in us central 1b it will try to serve the request from the database in us central 1b if the traffic is coming from the us central 1a it will try to serve the request from the database in us central 1a similarly for asia if traffic is coming from the Asia East 1A, it will not go directly to the database in central. It will try to serve the traffic from the database in US Asia, uh, sorry, Asia East 1A. It applies to all application which need high availability. So I'll just show you example for google.com. So what I will do, I'll just ping google.com from my uh, local system where I'm in India and I'll create one virtual machine in uh, US central region and I'll try to ping google.com from that vm and it will get response from a different ip address so i'll just first go to my powershell now here i'll just try to ping ping okay so here i'm getting a response from uh, this ip 142.251.4 okay i'll just uh, check uh, the name of this ip or a uh, logical host name. so let me check in uh, ip lookup So this host name is BOM that is a Bombay 
and it is serving traffic from the Bombay server not a data center because data center will be again in a USA now I will tie the same things to ping google.com from the uh, US central one virtual machine so I have one VM created here in US central one and I will already logged in into this and I will just try to ping uh, google.com from this and it will show the traffic from the nearest backend service so here you could see it is showing some different name jx hyphen in so this is a host name and it is not a same server for which i am getting traffic from the india so it just act like the load balancer and it will try to serve from the server which gives a lowest latency and best performance and which is available or in healthy state so uh, that's about a load balancer so there are a different types of load balancer in google cloud so you can see there is a https load balancer global external https load balancer then there is a external https load balancer which is a classic then ssl then tcp proxy then you have regional https load balancer then you have internal https load balancer then we have tcp load balancer and then external tcp udb load balancer but when we should use this load balancer so google has provided a very good documentation and a tree chart to make the decision which load balancer we should use so if it is uh, for external traffic then there are three options https http tcp and udp so these all three are external but if you want to use it for a regional one then go here in regional external https load balancer if you don't want a regional then we'll go a global https load balancer if you want ssl offload then go with ssl proxy if we don't want ssl offload we can directly go to the global tcp proxy okay similar way if you want to preserve the client ip then we have option for external tcp udp load balancer and this is the same traffic or same tree for your internal one so you can follow this if you want to make a decision which load balancer we should use in a google cloud so that's about a core concept of a load balancer now uh, we'll uh, go to our cloud console and we'll try to create a load balancer with a managed or unmanaged instance group so let's go to the cloud console now 